So in this video I wanted to just quickly show you guys what I'm doing with my strawberries this year and some tips that may help you in growing strawberries as well. That's coming up on this video. So I've really struggled for many years to really get good strawberries and the plants just, eh, did, they didn't really produce well even though I composted them well and try to keep them watered and you know try to be diligent about picking. Um, this year uh, my dad gave me some new starts from his uh, variety of strawberries that he had gotten from somebody else. We really don't know what the variety is but they actually produce really well. Uh, so I set them out in our place here, made some nice beds for them, covered them with plastic, tried to do you know the best I could and lo and behold wow these, these are really great strawberries. Uh, I stuck some of our um, had an older patch of strawberries um, that I took starts from this spring and I transplanted those into the bed that I made as well. It's about a 16 foot bed and those are just, yeah, they're barely doing much at all. They're really kind of limping along. Get a strawberry occasionally from them but they're not very good at all. But the other ones that my dad gave me, they're just, you know, extra, um, you know, starts, uh, crowns that he had broke off and um, put in a bag. And so those are doing exceptionally well. I'm really impressed by the, the difference in the varieties. So I want to kind of show you what's, what I'm, uh, how I'm also protecting them from the birds. Because that's another thing. If you don't protect them from the birds, you're losing, you know, maybe half of the strawberries or more. So I'm going to show you some things that I'm doing that are working well for us. So about every two days or so I come out here and pick the strawberries. So that gives, gives them time for them to get nice and ripe. So here you can see the little cages I made for the strawberries to keep the birds out and also the small children around here that like to get into them and uh, remove all the strawberries. And so found a way, I was like, I'm trying to think of a way, because um, I found the kids in here a couple times opening up the lid and uh, helping themselves to strawberries even though they weren't supposed to. So I figured, you know, how am I going to, is there any way to lock these up? So figured, well, you know, padlocks are kind of expensive, so I figured, well, how about just a screw? Thought came to me, so I figured, well, that's something I could, you know, it's cheap and yet I could put in there and keep them locked up. So here I have, um, these, are, these I made out of just some scrap lumber, so they really didn't cost me anything. Um, had some old chicken wire that I left, had left over from uh, fencing for trees that I no longer need. So able to use, utilize that. Um, so here I just have one screw in here and have my electric uh, screwdriver here. And this, this has a, actually a, a Torx T20 bit on here. I found these are extremely nice. They don't uh, slip. Um, it doesn't look, like a Phillips said. Well, you know, it'll, go, it'll slip out, or if you don't get it just right, it'll it can spin around and strip your bit and strip your uh, screw head. So you got to be real, you know, put a lot of pressure just at the right angle. And these are extremely nice. Um, you don't have that any of those issues once you get it in there. You just you know, there's almost no. I've never had them pop out or slip or anything like that. So. Here, so I get into the gear, and then I can just lift it up. And then I just have a board here I can use as a prop. So you can see here all the different stra uh, strawberry plants in here. Um, I think I have them about a foot apart. This is made as a 30 inch bed just to keep it nice and standard. And then, uh, so I got two 
uh, two rows for the part each. They seem to do pretty well at that spacing. And so I can uh, just easily look through here. I have the black plastic over the surface of the soil here and just cut little holes uh, where the plants are going to go. So that's really helped dramatically to keep the weeds down. Um, and I just stick the hose in there um, with the watering wand, just stuff it in that hole and just run water in there. And they seem to be doing fine with that amount of water just in that area. Uh, might actually make the roots go, you know, down more uh, rather than just kind of spread out. Um, not sure what I will do uh, as far as this fall. I probably will try to just chop off the tops, take the plastic off, add a bunch of compost, and you know, put them back over uh, for the winter. So, you know, keep adding. You know, I need to be able to add organic matter to the soil to keep that built up. So, and then I also got a lot of new starts, so I'm saving all the runners and putting those into little pots so that I can have more strawberries for next year. Down at the end there I have, oh, um, not sure how, how many more feet here, probably, let's see here, that would be about 10, and another 20 feet or so a bed that I want to extend these on since these are doing so well, and I'll make some more of these boxes. So you can see here some of the strawberries. They're they're decent size, they're not ter terribly huge. But then I didn't, you know, add a lot of compost to it. I didn't have a lot of compost when I was setting these out. It's another, there's some more decent ones here, but they're doing very very nicely here. So you can see here the pots that I put these into. These are just little three and a half inch pots, and just poke the roners in here and actually this one's got some flowers on it so that would be good to just clip those off here get rid of those we don't want them flowering until they're it's time for them to start producing fruit but so here's another little plant here that's in a pot so some of these I put little uh, staples just metal staples that I made some wire and so that keeps them down from popping up as they take root so this is just the the end of it here like this one is be another end one that I could once this gets long enough to reach into another pot I can put this one in and then it's just right at this point here um, with its kind of bulby here that's where you want it to touch the surface of the soil so this one some of these I've extended more than once so this is probably the, the first one here and then this this one sent out a runner, continued on. See, this one's even got a runner coming out of it. This one comes over here and uh, comes in, and I put it planted this one again. So it's got roots and going to be transplant this in onto another part of the bed. Uh, this as soon as the weather gets wet and starts raining, then I can start moving these around. Um, the beds here are, are, are from here, here down at the bottom all the way up to the top is about a foot. Um, and then I ran the chicken wire down just a little bit. I guess the chicken wire is just slightly longer than two, uh, one foot. So I just pushed it down a little bit and then that gives me a little bit extra and down at the bottom. These, this was a four foot chunk. So I used two foot at, on the top and then a foot on each side um, and on the ends there so it all worked out nicely to slice it up and I just put some corner pieces in here uh, some boards going up and down on the corners there to hold the made the two frames and then um, spaced them out with the with the boards here they were a uh, foot tall and then this is just some uh, two by twos that I had left over. So I made a top frame and so then I've hinged it on the back here with some, oh, tied, it's like a tie down uh, strapping that's plastic, something that's flexible. The metal, metal strapping I think would just uh, fatigue too easily. Uh, so I got three little strips here along the back. I just put a screw in each one, each one of the holes there and 
Got one down the other end. It seems to work pretty good for, for a hinge system. So let's pick some strawberries and let's see what we can get here. Got a little bucket here and picked your this is the first, uh, well, almost the first, the 30th of August here, so they've been producing all summer long, which is really great. These are an ever-bearing variety, so that's something to look for when uh, you're picking varieties. We also have a Sheskin, uh strawberries, which are a June-bearing. Um, they come all on all at once, and then you don't get any for the rest of the year. So, eh, I think they... they it's been said that the June bearing varieties um, give you more strawberries, you know, if you're, and they're good for like freezing or something like that, you get all at once. Um, I don't have a box yet for those, so I lose a lot to the birds and the slugs and everybody else. You know, in June there's, it's still pretty, well, I wouldn't say it's moist or wet out, um, but it's, there's still a lot more slugs around than there is at this time of year, and so I haven't really figured out if I. I'll, I think I want to stick a box around them just to kind of see you know how much are they really producing, and try to take care of them as well. Give them a really nice bed, water them well, and see if we can't get those to get into good production too, because that's a fairly good variety. Not too many. Here's this section over here is the starts from my dad, and then section over here there's one, two, three, four, eight plants over here uh, that I got from. Oh, they were starts. I can't remember if they're Puget Crimson or something like that. It's another ever-bearing variety. Uh, no, I don't think it was Puget Crimson. I think those are the June-bearing ones that we got. So these must be. Oh, I can't remember the name. I have to ask my wife. She remembers what they are. But, can't recommend them. There's some that are almost overripe here. Just some little tiny ones here. Some that are... Uh, there's one that's ripe. A lot of these are half ripe. There's a good one there. Probably not too many this week. This has actually been a slow week here. It's getting kind of cooler out, like I was mentioning, and so strawberries are all slowing down, and they're getting more shade. I think this is actually kind of a shady place. They're actually, you know, this is well, it's 5:40 in the afternoon, so it's um, getting going to be shade anyway around here, but. Um, even, you know, probably three or four o'clock, it's already getting shady. So this, is, this isn't the particular, particularly the best place for strawberries, but what's, uh, it's what I have available right now. And down towards the other end, it'll, it'll get sun for a little longer. Uh, it would be nice to, you know, get further down towards the fence, further north, and um, I think they'd probably do a little bit better. but. Got a lot of fruit trees around there, so I may try to stick some beds in there. I don't know, but uh, this is an available spot, so I made made use of it, and they've they've done quite well actually. You can see here, a little meager harvest. Usually get twice as much uh, every two days or so, but you know, they, they build up. We've gotten. Uh, about two and a half gallons of strawberries so far this year. You know, kind of diligently being out there, eating some already, but not too many. So anyway, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I've never really paid too much attention to the strawberries. They've just been kind of there, but I think, you know, they they do take a lot of work, but they're a very uh, good crop, and, you know, everybody seems to like the things, so can't go wrong there. Some of the other 
uh, crops that we grow. I'm about the only one that eats and eats them, so I feel like, well, I can, you know, I don't want to put too much effort into it to create too much of it because then I just don't get it eaten. But strawberries are one, well, I have plenty, plenty of helpers to help eat the strawberries around here. So also here's my um, uh, triple crown blackberries I got this year. So they're actually doing pretty good. I made, made a nice little bed for them um, over here. I think that's oh about uh, four about I guess about three feet spacing between between the beds. Um, another 30 inch bed just to keep everything consistent. And so I put some wires up here. I got some some more of this nice galvanized. I think it's like 12 and a half gauge wire. Seems to work pretty good. I uh, ran it and made it real, real tight down the other end, and so um, you can see I got uh, one plant over there. I got two two plants. Um, well, I probably got I got five, but I shared <laughs> two with one person, one with my parents. So just kind of pa pass it all around. So I'm trying to prop propagate these now. Now that I've gotten two established, so this is. This is another one here that was part of the other one um, that it had. There was kind of a root piece between them, so I broke that off and planted it here. It had a big long root that it already established, so this one seems to be doing well. Uh, I'll have to transplant this once it once it gets more established. Uh, transplant it on down the row. I'm not sure what the spacing on these should be yet. So, um, see, there's one, two, three. It's about three foot spacing from the other one. That may be fine. I need to do a little more research to find out what exactly spacing should be. So these had uh, a bunch of branches, like one there and um, one over here and a couple up here. So I just clip, clipped them off right at the, the surface there. Just chopped them off and and then I'm planting them out here in the soil to see if they're going to root or not. Um, so far, no luck on getting them root. They still seem to be holding moisture, so they're not dried out yet. Um, I did a bunch more from the other um, start that I had, so giving that a try. So far, they, they look all right. This time, I did brooding hormone on them, the um, gibralic or something like that acid. It's kind of a white powder that you can buy, and then I also did the willow water. Uh, watered them well with that and dipped them in that. Also scratched the surface of here, scratched it all up underneath where I have it underneath the soil. Uh, I have it probably six inches down. Um, so anyway, give it a try if they don't tend to root. Well, no, nothing lost. There's plenty more on this one. This is already starting to put out more uh, branches on here. So. Anyway, just an experiment to see what I can do as far as propagating these out. And so this one's already, oh, almost up to eight feet up here. So it's doing well. This one's doing a little bit better than the other one. This one's got quite a bit more sun than the other one over here, down at this end. So this one's only about maybe three feet high. Um, it had some kind of break in there too, and the, somewhere down here. And but it looks looks like it's healed up nicely. It's like a little. Um, no, I don't remember what it was. It was a it was a real sharp bend. Oh no, it's up here actually here up here. Yeah, it had a real sharp bend, and when I tried to straighten it out, it uh, kind of cracked it there. So <laughs> gotta be careful not to break my vine here. I'm not sure what happened with this. This this got something going on here. Trying to keel off from something. So anyway, it seems to be doing fine. Just kind of tying it up there to the wires, which I put about a foot apart. Trying to get some trellis ideas for these, and commercially, this seems to be about what they they do. In the leaning ones, at least, um, so it look like about a foot apart. And so it seems to be working. I think that should be fine. And then get up. Oh, it's about eight, eight or so feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I guess I got it. It's about seven feet now. Up at the top, the top wire is about seven foot. So I'll probably chop it off at the top there, or let it dangle it a little bit, 
and then let the uh, train the branches along each wire there as it comes in contact with about that level. I'll try to tie it up to the wire. Hopefully it won't be too much work. I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to be a lot of labor to get these, but I'm very thankful that they don't have thorns. <laughs> Tired of all the blackberries with thorns. we got plenty around here with thorns, so hopefully they also don't cross or, you know, the pollen from them doesn't cross and then get a bunch of blackberries with thorns coming up. Let's see what I got down here. This is the end post here. The other end I was able to use the tree. So I only had to put two posts in here. This one's a little bit shorter. So I just drilled some holes through there and ran the wire through and then made these super tight as tight as I could and I'm trying to figure out a good system here. And then I have a guy wire uh, coming up to cross the top of it here, tied it off there, and ran it down to a board stuck in the ground there, anchor, put a bunch of stones on there to try to, or weights on there to try to keep that from pulling out of the ground and put a tensioner on there and cranked it down as hard as I could. I don't think it actually was doing a whole lot of good, but it's something. It's already starting to lean just a little bit. So anyway, I tried to, you know, run run them all uh, out through and then run them all to a ring and tie them all down, and that was a complete failure. It was not getting them tight, so they were all floppy. Could not keep them all the same. So anyway, I figured, well, just tie them off. You know, wrap, wrap them around and tie them off as, you know, use some pliers and just pull on them as hard as I could. And um, anyway, it's... I'm not a good fence maker. <laughs> it's a skill I have not developed yet. And then I put an extension on the top up there to... Because um, this was a shorter post. This is an 8 foot post and the other one was a 10, 10 foot. So I used what I had without having to go buy more. So then I stuck the... Painted them with motor oil and put plastic around them and everything I can do to preserve them a bit more. I got some nice uh, blackberries out here. So, could use the, the thorn variety, the wild varieties. They're <laughs> not very big, but pretty good out here. They get the um, watering. Sprinklers hit these, so and they get good sun out here. So they're actually doing pretty good here. Same here. Oops. Doesn't want to come off. So they're not bad. Pretty sweet. So enjoy these. My wife's been out here picking them, and it's a convenient place to pick them out here in the garden. Yeah, there's quite a few out here. Got to kind of compete with the yellow jackets for um, blackberries. They like to get on here and start chewing on them, and so they're going to kind of have to watch out. Before you grab them, make sure there's not a yellow jacket attached to them. <laughs> 